Welcome everybody to the Talking Stick episode number 19. Hi What's guys. up? So, Yandy's going to show you what she's been working on. Fashion. Stressful level. Fashion show. <laughs> to the max. It has. I've been working like every night in between trying to do this new project or collection and the orders that I get in. I have to like go in between. So, um, I'm currently working on, okay, this first or that do those these okay yeah. so what i'm working on is bucket hats if you haven't watched my previous videos um with fabric that i have left over after doing pro um, other projects um i saved the smaller pieces and i'm repurposing them by making bucket hats and so this is one style i'm making a few different sizes so like one for johnny's size what and then one mean? for like me we'll call it like an extra large Jeez. <laughs> and then so one style is like all over and all of our hats are gonna be reversible. And then this will be on the other side. Then the other style will be like this. So it's only at the bottom. This one's a more simpler, like a low key fashion statement. And then it'll be right here. So they're all gonna be reversible. I'm gonna have extra large and then adult slash teen, then seven, 12 year olds until two from two year olds to 12 year olds and um, of course we have this bucket head on our website with our logo and really quick before we get brian on our guest today we also have crop tops on there oit warrior get those in before the summer is over and i also have some throw overs if you haven't ordered some you better hurry before they sell out but i have scarves um, I added some more because we sold out in a few days, um, but I added some more and oh, you know what? Nobody, I haven't said this, but um, I did have some fabric left over that I had from Guatemala and Mexico. So I'm making like, there's only like one or two that I was able to pull out. So I'm gonna have that listed on there too. Um, my friend, she's in Guatemala right now. Um, hey, George. And George, they're in Guatemala right now. They're they're giving me, they're bringing me some fabric, so I'm pretty excited. Okay, go. Oh yeah, guys, got your shorts, the new ones, light yeah. linen bolt right there, man. Nice and comfy, fleece. Tie them up so you don't lose them. So they don't fall off. Yep, don't fall off your cheeks. Let's get started <laughs> now. So Brian, get Brian up. So this this podcast today is going to be kind of, you know heartfelt heartwarming and aware don't forget don't forget to say a prayer let's say kind of after this because it's going to probably get into some intense stuff and the best person to explain it is dr brian burkhart when i said i'm the rest. here are the words you know they're going to be very thoughtful so there he is right there hi brian hey. <laughs> welcome back doctor yeah, good to see you all. Mm -hmm. yeah. How's the weather? Um, it's hot. It's hot and muggy here. <laughs> Just the way we like it. Yeah, Damn. I'm not. I'm not oh, used yeah. to that. Not no, I remember that. Oklahoma when we were there. Yeah. yeah, I hated it. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't like the the weather. It hasn't been that bad the the summers before this. This summer, it's like the mug, the Oklahoma that I remember as a kid coming here. <laughs> I hated it because we came from Arizona, right? That's where I grew up. And we'd come out here in the summer, and it was just hot and dry. Swampy and yeah. just, I mean, it was fun. There were crazy, you know, creeks to run around in with my cousins and everything, you know. But I sure could never figure out what was going on with the weather. <laughs> I'm like, something about, is wrong with this place. How about all the insects there, man? Oh, yeah. Because, you know, if it's cold in the winter, the insects are going to die. But if it's not that cold, then they're all showing up in the summertime. Right? Yeah. Ew, I remember it's... the horse flies. Yeah. <laughs> Ew, overdies, the first huh? time it was so big. And I was like, what is that? My friends were like, a horse fly. I was like, no way. And they were like, yeah, it's like this big. And I was like, let me see it. And they're like, yeah. There it is. Yeah. I couldn't believe uh, flies could be that spice. big. Ugh, and I hate flies, but... Um, yeah, bugs and mug and, but it's not that bad hanging in here, getting our house fixed. Luckily, they uh, finished, they were doing some painting today. I thought they might be banging around on the house because we got a big hail tornado storm that busted out some of our windows and oh, did a bunch of, 
damage on the house and they're finally getting it. They did the roof uh, a couple weeks ago and now they're painting the house to slowly oh. kind of getting things. We still don't have any windows on the front side. It's all boarded up. Oh, wow. It takes forever because so many people have the same thing happen at the same oh. time. So they're all backed up on like the workers and the, oh. the windows and everything because thousands of people had to have their houses, you know, fixed because you know, came through here and just messed up everybody's house. Yeah. And just Nobody like, wanted boom. to do DIYs? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. no. I probably would have done it at some point. Like, okay, if it's taking too long, let me look up a YouTube video. Let me try to put the window in by myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Looking I'll like a crack out. house over there. You know? <laughs> yeah. <it> up. <laughs> and tin foil. Exactly, right? <laughs> Keeping the heat out. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, All right, so let's get with this topic, man. Yeah, coming. So with the whole, you know, it's came full circle now, right? Yeah. Came first full circle, and there's been a lot of kids that been recovered, right? Yeah, yeah. Found, whatever you, term you want to use, but yeah. recovered is kind of a pleasant term for us because they're finally coming home. Let's say. Yeah. And all these churches that have been doing that, this stuff ain't new to us who have really been in the the fight, the battle. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's it's, it's kind of new to those who are just learning, and the mm -hmm. news itself has carried it. It's been such a hot topic. Yeah, yeah. In a bad way, but it's like you know what these these people, you know, we've been crying a wolf, <laughs> yeah. right? A lot, crying wolf a lot. How, how they want to play it. Yeah, yeah, and you know, it's kind of became the realization of what's really happening, and it's just a lot of work that has to be done on the end of when you find those bodies. If it's introduced to NAGPRA and getting them home safe, because it's a hard tracking system that you want to find and yeah, difficult itself. So and there's rules too, right? Like of course. I, I heard there's a jur jurisdiction, mm -hmm. and so they have to figure out how when how things are going to move or where it's going to go to, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we did speak on this subject. Sorry, Ryan, to cut yeah, you off, go ahead. but um, I wanted to bring this up because we did have you on a couple of weeks ago, and we did touch on this subject just a little bit about the boarding schools. And so now with everything that's been happening, we Full wanted circle, to man. bring you yeah. back on, and we want to speak more about that subject. We did say before, you know, there's a lot that goes into this. There's so many different yeah. topics, and. Um, yeah. So that's what we're going to be speaking on today. If you can just like enlighten us or educate. Um, You're the guy to do it, bud. Know. You're the guy to do it. Yeah. I'm never going to forget that. There you go. Don't say the All magic right. word. Yeah, I'm going to be real, real quiet this time. <laughs> Crazy. All right. But uh, maybe we can go ahead. Hopefully uh, we uh, got past the bugs. Or um, we gotta be quick with it. <laughs> yeah, we gotta just use code words. Don't mm -hmm. say the don't say the magic words. But what I was saying was, you know, like uh, you know, a lot of us, like Johnny was saying, you know, a lot. I of didn't us, say nothing. I didn't say nothing. <laughs> well, we heard these stories, you know. I mean, we all know these stories. Right? That's the thing that, you know, when we watch this stuff on the news, it's sort of out in the open in the public. And people are talking about it and they're all surprised, right? They're yeah. like, oh, wow. But, you know, if you've been around, even just in kind of close contact with, you know, boarding school kind of situations, you've heard of these stories before. Like, I remember years ago, I went to Sherman one time and they were talking about Sherman Indian School, Riverside, right? Mm -hmm. They were talking oh, about how... They had to move the school, like where the school is now, right there on whatever Magnolia, that street that it's on. That's not where it was originally. It was back up on the hill. Uh, and they had to move it because, you know, the kids were kind of freaking out because they could even see the grave markers, you know, the big field of grave markers that were there. And that's mm -hmm. not even what they're discovering now. And, you know, people have known this for a long time in the stories in the community, right? that there's a lot of unaccounted for graves. There's the graves, the cemeteries with the markers. And then there's a lot of just unmarked graves. And they've even found that in the United States, right? At uh, 
Chimawa up in Oregon, a woman um, who did does research on this. Uh, I think she's um, what tribe is she from? Northern Cheyenne. Um, she did research up there. Melissa Marsha Small is her name, and she did research and found um, 222 sets of remains that weren't a part of the 208 that were in the cemetery, right? And the, and the way that they're able to do this now, the technology, they've been talking about this for a long time. I remember when, when I used to talk about this in that 101 class, you know, just talk about the, the missing, right? You know, just the unaccounted for, because there's cemeteries and there's records of kids dying. You know, those records are kind of questionable because, you know, you have, 20 kids dying in the winter of unknown illness or, you know, just of, you know, sick and died, right? There, there's a lot of questions there. But the, the, the big question that's kind of come into the forefront now is the, the unmarked graves. And so what they've been able to do is with um, ground penetrating radar, they've gone into these places. That's what they did at Chimawa in Oregon. They use this ground penetrating radar to find bodies that weren't in the places they were supposed to be. What and is that's that? Kind of what, like, like a metal detector type of thing? Yeah, but it's much more fancy, right? It's oh, sort of like okay. what they what they've done, like in uh, with dinosaur, you oh, know, dinosaur okay. kind of hunting things, where you know they can use this radar to find without digging up. You know, oh, okay. tons and tons of of, of earth over a mm -hmm. massive area, right? Mm -hmm. They're able to just with that radar find bones, right? Oh. And find them and kind of be able to map them out to say, here's a body, here's another body, wow. here's another body, and these are like in a big area, or there's two or three bodies on top of each other, you know, all that kind of stuff, and that's what they've been they've been doing in. In Canada, it's only kind of at that level. They're not really going through and digging up that. Mm. They're just finding with the radar these unaccounted for bodies. And in mass numbers, we're talking about in one boarding school, 700 plus. Mm. And But people have been saying this forever. I remember I found this, this documentary that I would show some of in that 101 class. This guy, um, Jeff Arnett. I think was his name he was an anglican priest because in canada all the residential schools were run by the churches on the, in the on the western side it was the anglican church on the eastern side it was the catholic church uh, in the united states it was run after the carlisle <laughs> indian industrial school was founded in 1879 um general pratt you know um it was run by the federal government Right? So they were kind of religious institutions in Canada, and they were federal government, just like BIA-run schools mm. are today. Um, obviously, hopefully, we, we think that those schools are better you know, than, than they were in the original kind of uh, version of it. But you know, that's another question maybe for, for another day to talk about the present <laughs> you know, of those Indian boarding schools in the United States versus the past. Mm -hmm. But... In Canada, this guy, Jeff Arnett, who was an Anglican priest in British Columbia, um, started hearing from people, started hearing from people about, you know, these sort of stories of the, you know, one of their relatives, you know, who, was, who died mysteriously and then just like never was seen again or went to a boarding school and kind of they heard he died, but like there was never any kind of paperwork or never any grave or anything. So these stories were going on. This was not something that just suddenly they're like, oh, let's go and wonder about throwing some ground penetrating radar on these, <laughs> on these boarding schools or residential schools in Canada. There were stories, right? In fact, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission that was started in Canada came out of these boarding school, people talking about their own physical and sexual abuse and the history of that and all the trauma and the missing kids. That's what created this huge, you know, um, undertaking of the Truth and Recon Reconciliation Commission in Canada. So, you know, this has been going on for a long time, and they're finally just kind of getting to the point where they're coming up with some 
answers, mm -hmm. some some research, some evidence that can prove to the people, like you're saying, that just think we've been crying wolf all this time, talking mm -hmm. about, you know, these stories. Mm -hmm. And and now, of course, they're all surprised, like, oh wow, <laughs> like oh. this is crazy. You couldn't believe this when people have been saying this for for generations talking about it's, it's one of those history. moments where it's like oh let the next guy worry about let the next guy worry about it. and that time has finally came where oh damn yeah. like we're worried about it oh i didn't know this like yeah it's been happening or they thought it was like so long ago like hundreds yeah. of years ago that nobody speaks about it anymore well the last school what the last school closed officially in 1996 so it's not no, yeah it's the, the residential new. school yeah. in canada yeah. Right, you know, there's still, yeah. there's still plenty of, there's still plenty of schools in the U.S., right? The BIA-run schools yeah. are still there. You know, Canada, they shut them down as a part of this Truth and Reconciliation Commission because there were so many lawsuits coming that instead of kind of dealing with these lawsuits, they just oh, shut God. down the school oh, wow. and started a, 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 you know, federal process of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission to deal with this. And these are some of the, I mean, that was 1997. How long has it taken, you know, for this stuff to finally come out, you know, the evidence that, you know, people have been talking about. But it is nice that there's some stuff going on in the United States too, because a lot of times the U.S. gets lost in the shuffle of this, right? Because there's, you know, people are like, oh, it wasn't that bad in the United States, or it wasn't, and it's really just because people haven't really done the work and talked mm -hmm. about it and really, you know, exposed mm -hmm. the history of that and even, you know, the, you know, done some of this work, you know, that's going to happen, um, I think, from from Deb Hallin's, um investigation that she started. You're going to start finding this kind of stuff in the U.S. too because everybody knows the same thing happened, right? It wasn't like... You know, Indian boarding schools in the United States were were Better. sort of nice, and you know, Canada was the kind of I mean, all the stuff that happened in Canada, you know, happened in the United States, and probably even more so, right? Mm -hmm. You know, just that they were able to sort of like, you know, cre do such damage in the United States on a systematic scale that you know, by the 1900s literally almost every native child was in a boarding school somewhere right and they and it's just it's so much stuff was lost language and kind of connection and even sort of the sense of uh strength to call out that stuff right people were really uh impacted the trauma so that's another big part of this is not only the it's kind of like what they, you know, are doing in Canada with the Truth and Reconciliation Commission is that we got to know the truth, but we got to then talk about the healing too, mm -hmm. right? Because it's not just we know this stuff happened, because what happened, there's still consequences, right? Even if there's no boarding school left anywhere, you know, the things that are happening, like I saw someone post, I saw someone post this on Instagram or Facebook or something earlier today. They were talking about, you know, whenever I see, uh, you know, like, a, you know, you talk about a, an, an Indian bum somewhere, right, on the street. Um, you don't see a, a Indian bum. I see someone who's working out the, the you know, the, the, the intergenerational trauma of these things that, that were done, right? Because they have devastating and long-lasting impact. Even if you weren't, you're like, oh, I didn't go to boarding school. My... My grandma didn't go to boarding school. You know, we were fine. Still, those things impact the community and people's mm -hmm. ability to even have confidence in themselves. I mean, you think about what they did to these little children. Like, I always just try to get students to put themselves in the mindset, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, make yourself a six-year-old child. And, like, let's say, you know, all you do is, you know, you speak English and you watch your cartoons and you play your xbox that's your life you know you hang out in the park with your friends you know you're just a kid in in norman oklahoma and these people just come and they just take you away from your home and they put you on this train and and every time you just try to say hey what's going on in your only language you speak you know they beat you right they try to do everything to kind of to to undermine your sense of identity and even even your humanness, right? 
that's part of the the kill the Indian save the man right that um, General Pratt who founded the school um, said in his you know his kind of uh, um, version of this right when he said he said for example this is the full quote from him a great general has said that all the only good Indian is a dead one and that high sanction of his destruction has been an enormous factor in promoting Indian massacres in a sense I agree with the sentiment but only in this that all the Indian there is in the race should be dead kill the Indian in him and save the man mm -hmm. right so this was the mentality of the, the of these schools started in 1879 right it wasn't about learning it wasn't about education it was about assimilation and killing Indian culture killing Indian languages, you know, killing sort of Indian confidence in their kind of ability to say, hey, we don't want this done to us. We want our own way of life. We want our own culture. We want our own sovereignty. We want, you know, our treaties respected. Any of those things would be wiped out, right? They wouldn't have the confidence to kind of stand up for themselves, right? And, and hold on to and have, have pride in their, their culture, their heritage, their language, right? And of course, in the context of that kind of version of schooling, you know, it's going to be devastating. I mean, not only is it even the people that survived are going to be, you know, are going to pass on trauma after trauma after trauma over generations, mm -hmm. right? There's no way that this is going to result in anything but, you know, genocide in every kind of way, either sort of literally, you know, kids dying. Because I sort of look at it like this too when when I teach about this. So so you, you take that mentality, right? Take that mentality, and here's a six year old child that, that comes into your boarding school, and you're trying to you're trying to save them, right? From <laughs> that, themselves. Yeah, that's the word. You're trying man. to save them from their culture, because it's bad, right? You know, it is it is it's horrible. It's you know it's savage. It's you know it's like a wild animal. It's like a you like I imagine it like a you know, you have a, a, a pit bull that's got the taste of blood and you're trying to save it. Like, no, I don't want to put down this pit bull, right? I want it to stop, you know, doing its savage things and biting people, right? That's your mentality. You're the priests, the nuns, the boarding school, the BIA agents in the United States. That's your mentality. So a child just kind of is a little bit obstinate, just like, no, screw you. I don't want to do this thing. They're just like, oh, that's it, you know, they, and, and they kind of, and then of course they beat the child and the child dies, you know, they're just like, well, you put it down, you put down a, a rabid animal, right? Cause it wasn't gonna, it wasn't gonna be fixable, right? Mm -hmm. Because they were, they were obviously resisting and holding on to their, you know, their savage ways, you know? And so trying to get, you know, trying to get you both in the mindset of like what it's like, what it would have been like, what it's, you know, um, still like in, in some cases for kids to go through this, but also what it was like, what the people were thinking. And because it's hard for us to imagine how a human being could do that to another human being, right? But if you have this indoctrination, this doctrine of kind of trying to save the savages from their animal ways, you know, that, you know, it's their only hope for survival in a world of civilized human beings, right? So anyone who holds on to their culture or is even resistant, you know, basically is sort of not worthy to live, right? And, you know, you're not, you know, you're not doing anything harmful and sort of, you know, killing them and sort of, you know, burying them. You're just, those are the ones that you couldn't save, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's the words. Yeah, right? So yeah. I think that, that that kind of helps us sort of, you know, get into the, you know, the, this, this reality, not just from a general perspective of like how, how horrible it is, because we can oftentimes look at something like that and say, oh, it was so horrible, but not see how easy it is to kind of be in that place, right? But can you imagine that like year or decades later now, you know, before ICWA started and Indian Child Welfare Act, before that started, before we have to be with native kids or indigenous kids with indigenous people and tribes yeah, yeah, yeah. them going into the 
other home, other non-Indigenous people's homes and, you know, being treated the same way, mm -hmm. being adopted too, and mm -hmm. just family-wise and yeah. what the people did back then to to fight for the equal rights and to actually get the kids to live with Native families. That's, that's something yeah. to talk about too, but... And there's still so later. much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's still so much that hasn't changed, right? Even with all... I mean, you think about that. So just to let everybody know what we're talking about, you know, the Indian Child Welfare Act, uh, I totally forgot the the year that it was made. It wasn't that long ago. Yeah. We talked about it last time, a little bit of it last time, because we talked about that court case that went to Texas. Too. Yeah. Um, 1978, ICWA. Right? So what ICWA was trying to do, I mean, think about how ridiculous this is. Okay, you have a foster care system. But the foster care system, you know, was so biased against Indian families that, you know, they were taking, they were just taking Indian children away from their families as a matter of course. Like, well, of course, an Indian child would be better off away from that mm -hmm. savage Indian family, right? If they were with a white family, they have a chance of making it in the world of not being an Indian yes, in the sense of <laughs> yeah. killing the Indian, right? They're not going to sort of carry on that those those horrible animalistic savage ways, you know, and they'll be a, they'll have a better chance of making it in the world. So they had to create an act to to protect, you know, Indian children from being just taken away from their homes just because they were Indian children in Indian homes. And that's kind of what ICWA did was try to create barriers that it wasn't so easy to just like oh Indian child Indian home. Take them away, mm -hmm. right? They had to. They had to really um, have proof that it was not a safe place for them to be. And even if they were going to take them away, they had to kind of go through a process of adjudicating that so that children would either go with family or with another native family, you know, of the same tribe or of some tribe, right? Mm -hmm. To kind of protect that. You know, so that Indian children weren't just, you know, because the um, one of the definitions of, of genocide, right, you, you know, is from the Geneva Convention is removing children in whole or in part from their community, mm -hmm. right? Taking the children away is kind of how you kill a people. Of course, you got no children. What do you got? Right. Mm -hmm. Our children are everything. They're our future. There's, they're how we live into the future through our children. Pass on the language, the tradition, the way of life. They carry it on, their children. You take children away, that's genocide, right? Mm. You don't have to kill people, literally, to create genocide by removing all their children, right? And so ICWA has you know, tried to do that, but you still see that bias, you know, that Indian children are better off away from their own families you know so like for example in south dakota um i think it's like 13 14 percent of the state of south dakota is native but 88 percent of the foster care system <laughs> still even after Damn. Right? Wow. you know it's just even with all those those barriers because that's what ICWA did is just kind of create barriers mm -hmm. to keep this from happening you know, it's still it, that that structure, you know, that we see that created in the first place is still in people's mind, in the system itself, right? And so yeah. much more needs to be done, right? So that's wow. part of like when we're looking at these things, looking at what has happened, but like trying. I don't know, man. There's always this thing, you know, in the big time industry that says, you know, I'll give them freedom of speech, but I'm going to make it inconvenient for them. <laughs> That's what's happening right now, I guess. Let's see. If Brian's back on for part three, I guess. Jeez. Inconvenient. That's what we do. Inconvenient. Yeah, we went too far. We went yeah. too far. We were... Yeah, he said the magic words, man. Yeah. We we're doing all right, then we just yeah. kind of pushed it, pushed a little too far. Then. Yeah, it took it took a hundred years to get to this point, but we're still here. <laughs> we're talking about the timeline of that, the border schools, and then ICWA. Yeah, and then that 
that trauma too of being taken away, you know, into different homes. And to think about it, when those people or the tribal members who actually come back to their community, it's like, who are you, right? And it's not even their fault. That's what's, that's what's, I heard a lot of stories about that too. Like, I want to reconvene with my family, with my tribe. And it's just like, oh, who are you? And you're not a tribal member. And whatever wow. roles they have to play. That's another layer too. But yeah, <laughs> Jeez, yeah it's, it's, it's true, right? You know, yeah. people, and people don't know what, what did I do? You're imagine you're a kid, you know, you start in this school and you're six years old or something like that. And, and then, I mean, you didn't choose to do anything. All of a sudden you're different. You don't know your language. You don't know how to, to um, interact with your family. You don't know your clan information or your kind of ceremonial roles, whatever it is. Right. And yeah. All of a sudden you're an outsider and you're like, then, then how lonely do you feel, right? What do you yeah. turn to? Drugs, alcohol, maybe, right? You know, it's, and it's your fault. That's how yeah. it's treated. And it's your fault. <laughs> yeah, I heard someone talking about that. Uh, someone who works with this stuff on the Pine Ridge, you know, talking about kids, talking to kids that just carry around this heavy burden. They're just kids. They just feel so heavy all the time, just so sad, and they're just struggling. And, you know, it's like they're carrying that stuff still. I don't blame yeah. them, man. That's a lot to carry and a lot of healing, too. And yeah. A lot of folks don't think about that either. Yeah. yeah. And it's their fault. Yeah. <laughs> right. So that's hard. You know what I learned? Um, that even um, if the new child is being born, didn't experience the trauma, the parents carry that trauma. And as the baby's being created in the womb, that trauma goes on to that kid without even them experiencing it. But it's already like in their DNA and stuff. And that's why sometimes, even though we, we try to raise some kids as well as we want to, sometimes things happen and they can take the wrong path. And I feel it's because of the trauma that happened while they were in the womb of the mother. So any trauma that I, that I could have experienced, it will go to them unless I address it or help them heal from it or if I heal myself from it. But, um, but yeah, I learned about that. I thought that was pretty interesting. Like, I didn't even know it can go that way, but they can already carry it yeah. with them without even experiencing it. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of work being done on that. You know, if you uh, just in, in, uh, in Native communities, in academia, kind of uh, intergenerational trauma. And, like, you know, there's all kinds of ways that we can, we can think about it, you know, that what it what you know how it gets passed on you know there's obvious ways we just think about how we you know where we cut the experiences we have shape how we interact with our kids and then the parent the experience we had came from how our parents interacted with us and on and on and on right but some of it clearly seems to be a lot of native people think about this like you know deeper than just behavior on the surface of, yeah. you know, that there's, like you're saying, that there are things that, the things that are kind of in us, in our blood, as we say, our DNA, or, mm -hmm. you know, something that's more about this bigger pain that has just been there and, and carries in our communities from all this loss and all this heartache that mm -hmm. is deeper than just something that our parents did or experienced or grandparents did or experienced you know yeah. and, and that's the thing that people are really kind of thinking about like how to how do you heal from this because like i was saying if you look at a lot of the like so the native american rights fund is doing a project on boarding school um you know kind of truth and reconciliation they're doing a, a healing and and uh a truth and healing uh project as a part of the uh, um, Na Na National Native American Boarding School Healing Coalition. Those are both things that you can look up, you know, NARF, the Native American Rights Fund project on that, and also the National Native American Boarding School Healing Coalition. Because a lot of it's like the truth, but then it's like, well, the truth is just the truth. What do we, what do, we do to 
to heal from this, right? To yeah. create What futures. do I do with these bodies that I found yeah. now, right? That's, yeah. that's the crazy thing too. And there's so many, there's so many levels to that, like we've been talking about, right? Because even just that, when you think about that, I look at it, you know, just that, you know, like a lot of, a lot of native people, you know, believe in, you know, the process of, of, of death and taking care of, you know, someone when they pass in a good way, you know, that those things are a part of the energy of the future. It's not just, you know, someone was killed and they, you know, are mistreated and then they kind of, you know, carry on that trauma that all these kind of bodies that are just sort of thrown into the ground in all these different places, that creates trauma, right, in a community. Just that, that, that life, those lives that were not taken care of in a good way. You see this in Canada, there's a lot of, one of my friends is a part of a walk um, up in uh, British Columbia where they're walking, you know, for the children, right, mm -hmm. to, to walk them back home. You know, because that's one thing we do, Native people, you know, us, us, one ceremonial way that we, you know, we move energy forward in prayer is, you know, walking, right? Making these prayer walks, you know, either in kind of traditional ways that we did or even in the present, you know, walking, you know, for as a prayer to kind of, you know, move this healing forward. So there's lots of things that people are doing, but. It's a huge, it's a huge thing, right? To think about what healing means, you know. Mm -hmm. It could be different for everybody or what they need. Yeah. Um, I don't know if, if we said this earlier, but how did it all get started? Like, how was it discovered, and how did it reach the media? Do you know? Yeah. Um, so I don't remember right now. Yeah. Um. So it was a part of. I'm not sure about the the first place that what that where there was the um, discovery was the in Kamloops in British Columbia, that was the 215, right? So I don't know if you oh, remember yeah. this. There were all these, uh, um, there were all these uh, uh, t-shirts and orange um, mm -hmm. screens on Instagram with the 215. Um, that was the first place and um, I believe it was the same. I mean, I think it was the same thing, but they must they must have actually. Uh, Once they started looking some more, then they found more, right? In different and, places, and, yeah. Oh, they started investigating. Place. Because in in Kamloops, because they because in the story about Kamloops, they're talking about kind of specific, even ages, you know, like so. For example. They found a child that was as young as three years old. So that means they have to be doing more than just the ground penetrating, you know, radar kind of stuff to find, you know, unmarked graves. They're actually, you know, doing the work to recover at least some of the, the you know, the bodies and, and, and so on. There's not a lot of talk about that. And I think that's kind of on purpose because, you know, what what needs to be done there is kind of private right you know yeah. you're not going to put that on you know on blast and do you know on video cameras showing them you know dealing with the you know returning these these remains and how they you know how they take care of that um in their in their way as a, as a tribe as a community but that's where it started that was a, that was uh um when was the date of that? That was um, like in the end of May when they found that 215. And then it was, then they just kind of started finding every week, you know, another, you know, group. So there's now over a thousand that have been discovered in Canada since that May 29th. And of course, it's just the beginning. I mean, they've only looked at maybe a handful of schools. Right, there were 751 that were discovered at um, Saskatchewan at the Maraval Indian Residential School. You know, and and how many? You know, there's there's hundreds and hundreds of schools just in Canada, and there's hundreds and hundreds of schools just in the you know United States, right? Mm -hmm. So. 
this this you know could get uh, you know this could get it's much bigger i'm sure it will before it's sort of finished yeah. um just this kind of discovery process which is which is horrible like we we're saying it's just so this is the this is the part that it's you know it's just you need to put some some prayer out and even you know how you're talking about it and so on because it it's just, it's just so devastating to even just the to try to even talk about this and think about it how to grapple with it with your mind much less your heart you know just mm -hmm. uh, but it's a part it's a part of the process that needs to happen you know so that people can start to really talk about this in the open and you know people can know about it in a way you know the J min mainstream kind of canada and the united states you know can can have a, a more honest conversation about it you know that might be part of the even the healing process for for everyone i don't know yeah it's gonna be a wild recovery man but hopefully the people who lost their loved ones from this you know get to finally see and the people actually come home that's what's crazy too yeah and when in the u.s too once the tribes get word of it or they start rallying up with mm -hmm. tribal council supports and everybody and yeah a lot of the universities here they have those bodies in collective too and they're just there a lot of them are not they're just there and the, the universities don't really know what to do with them yeah because of the top level person within their policy said this but there's no really this because it's always a new person a new person a new person and it kind of gets stuck in you know it's called blowing smoke or muddying up the water you know mm -hmm. and the bodies are still there and yeah. I remember they asked us do you want to go see the bodies we're like no we don't want to go see them up there man. no i ain't opening up that box or not it's like no yeah. i'll go I check out the that right I'll go get my baskets back, but don't let me look at the bodies, man. Because yeah. yeah. I got to look at the bodies. They're coming back right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're not going to just, yeah, there's no way. I and heard, um, or I um, I read on something like that happened in, I believe, San Diego or at some university. They were trying to bring light. Some girl on Instagram, I think. Or Berkeley. TikTok, it's always Berkeley for us. That yeah. They were trying to rebuild something or make a parking lot, and there had been some bodies discovered. Oh, that, but, was, that was, wasn't that Long Beach? Oh, maybe, yeah, 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 right. Long Beach. And I don't think that they did what they should have done. Or I don't know. Um, I didn't follow up with it afterwards, but... Um, yeah, I think it was Long Beach. Mm. Yeah, there's it's there's so many, you know, just like anything else. And you, I mean, just think about this: that you have to make laws, just like we were saying about children. Like, make laws. Don't just take native children from their homes because they're native. Like, I mean, why would you have to make laws to do this, right? Yeah. It, it doesn't even. It's just sort of there's we're dealing with the like. Don't like don't be a racist cop and kill a black person just because they're a black person i mean like you, the fact that you have to make laws like this mm. shows that you know there is not going to be enough right because you're dealing with something you can't legalize away right because it's a mentality that people have a kind of right a privilege and within that there's always going to be loopholes in terms of ways that people can if they want to you know, find ways to hang on to those bodies and so on, right? You know, and people are not going to just do the right thing because they still have this mindset that, you know, the laws were meant to kind of try to help people. Don't be racist, you know, but you can't make a law that, you know, you can try to minimize that. But, you know, pe there are people that will still hold on to those ideals and those values and way of seeing the world. And you can't do anything about that with the mm. law. Right. And they also hold on to their religion beliefs yeah. that they bring yeah. into that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We were we were in a public setting like that in uh, the 2019, and we had the the university chancellor in there, and we're the the tribe started talking about the NAGPRA stuff, the same thing we're talking about now with the bodies that are in there, and mm -hmm. it was more of a public setting with with the, all the California tribal leaders, and. That was when the governor was there too, you know, giving a little show. This is who we are. This is who's elected. And then 
once the chancellor got up there and she was talking about laws and how it's going to be how good they're doing and how they're having this um, native advocacy board now mm -hmm. and man the tribal leaders started just hounding on her <laughs> because you know what what's good is it now you know and you just all you have to do is whoever was in power right we just want these people home and yeah it's just wild and it was good while it's like geez like they're not the you know we're not the always talking about this it's always in the higher areas yeah and you know nothing happens because smoke's in the water man and muddy water and all that crap yeah just, and they get a lot it's really easy to get people to buy into that right yeah. even like you can get people on you know in the community or in tribal council to like oh don't make some waves you know like you know we'll you know we'll, we'll take care of this thing first and then it kind of just gets pushed down the stream you know it's really easy to you know to get sucked into that yourself right you know and it's good to see i always like when i see people you know, whoever they are, some old, you know, grandma in the back of the room or some kids, whoever it is that are just like, no, right? We're not going to just sweep this under the rug. We're going to we're gonna talk about this and we're not going to just play nice to like, oh, we don't talk about stuff that's going to hurt people's feelings, yeah. right? We want to just play nice and have everybody, because that doesn't help. That doesn't help, you know, these situations, right? If we don't sort of call it like it is, and try to, to get to the truth and be honest about it, then we just keep going like we've been going and just shoving stuff under the rug. And, you know, maybe you can move forward, but not in a way that really provides healing for Native people. That's my view. Yeah, that's right, though. Yeah. When they call them out, and it's just so simple, simple steps. And they make it a big thing because policy over policy over procedure yeah and then who's it go to now and especially if tribes don't have stuff documented with federal and non-federal and then that gets muddy and i'll get mm -hmm. this for you because i can because i'm a federal tribe because, but yeah. we all know it's yours but here you go and yeah. that stuff's wild too <laughs> and yeah if you guys are the listeners too if you guys are in this stuff man don't be afraid to comment and leave your stuff man that's it, it's it's a wild process and yeah i've seen that so much at in california in particular because there's so mm -hmm. many you know little tribes and so many you know uh you know un unrecognized federally recognized tribes and you know trying to deal with that stuff and you getting someone to take it for you so that you can you know take care of your relative because that's the the process because they can't give it to you and yeah, yeah, it's just people. If people knew about the kind of shenanigans that <laughs> go into this, yeah. they would they would probably be up in arms, you know. Just like like you're saying, it's so simple. It's just like, okay, this is this person's relative. Like we know this. This is this person is from this community. Just just give them back, right? Well, oh, they're not federally recognized, so you know we don't have any responsibility to them. You know, come on. How about That's just so being decent human beings? Yeah. Just some humanity, right? Everything has to be laws. That's the thing that you, you know, you see just this, this mentality, even, you know, even the, the idea of how we sort of, you know, try to control and protect the world with laws, you know, that, I mean, laws are fine, but if we don't have, you know, basic, decent, human relationships underneath it you know they're not really gonna protect us mm -hmm. you know you gotta just be a be a good human being and try to treat you know everybody like they were your your relative even somebody in the ground you know that you're digging up what if that were your relative how would you want to be treated if you did that then we wouldn't have any of these problems you know it seems so simple right or even if it was, uh, let's say, like the government's relatives or family members, they would then create, oh, it's okay, like, oh, this is different. We can take them home or let's just give the bodies back because it's just a different race. And because it's indigenous people, they want to make it difficult. And That's because oh, we animals, we, go. we savages, <laughs> yeah. we're interesting. Yeah, it's like, di it's like dinosaurs, all. right? It's like dinosaurs. You want to study the you know, we want to study them because we don't know, we want to know them. It's all kind of, you know, this fetishization and even like, 
you know, to, you know, absorb the, you know, the, like everything. I got another call from the um, ancient aliens today that wanted me to be in their <laughs> <spirit>. nice. <laughs> so they found me even in Oklahoma. I thought I did not from <laughs> They give a little me. background on that one. Give a little background on that one. Just so <laughs> brief. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was He's pretty small. Oh, so I, uh, <laughs> yeah. So they, uh, I don't remember. Somehow, so I got a message because, uh -huh. you know, it was Cal State Northridge, you know, like they uh -huh. they did one of their filming stuff right in like uh, um, Chatsworth. They had a house up there with all the, where they have all the fancy big couches and like wood that you see in the, in the show that's it was a ranch up there where they did a lot of their filming so they probably just looked up you know like they saw a cal street northridge native american studies you know who's this guy let's they send me an email <laughs> so i uh i called them back i'm like all right so what's this about you know they're like yeah we want to do this stuff on on star knowledge and like you know star children and like you know um <laughs> things like the medicine wheel and star alignments so i'm like all right, well, well, you know, I'll, I'll come and, you know, like, talk about whatever, answer some questions, you know, see what this is about. So I, I went up to this place, and um, it was the weirdest thing ever, because they were just asking these just bizarre questions. And, and they had me, right, because, like, everybody, I was waiting in the house while they had the other people talking on the couch and stuff like that. Uh -huh. They were like... Oh, we want you to be outside in front of the cactus. Because <laughs> then this is like the Indian knowledge or whatever. Like, go stand in front of the cactus. I don't want you sitting on a couch. That doesn't look real. doesn't look authentic. They want the wisdom of the cactus or whatever. You know, like, oh, it's just. But anyway, I tried to, you know, just kind of gotcha, set them bro. straight. Right there. <laughs> I tried to set them straight, you know, just like telling it like it is. You know, tell them what I thought. And, you know, they, they kind of just cut, you know, because it was like I did two different interviews for like maybe a half an hour. And they I asked believe me it. Question. <laughs> and they used maybe like a minute in one <gasps> show and then maybe like two minutes wow. in another. Just like little clips of things that I had yeah. said to mix in their stuff. And I'm like, all right, you guys are just a waste of my time. I, I'm not going to do this anymore. And they, that was, you know, what, that was, I don't even know when that was. That was probably 2015 or something like that. 14? 2014, it says. Yeah. It's on yeah. Ancient Aliens, Season 7, Episode 6, <laughs> called The Shamans. So yeah, right The here. Shamans. <laughs> boogity, boogity, boogity. I mean, I just talked about, like, you know, the relationship of, uh, like, places where ceremonies happen and to constellations and that sort of sense that, you know, like with the medicine wheel or places like that, that there's this, you know, the, the stars and the earth and those kind of al alignments of constellations and the rising of the moon. And that's kind of a part of, you know, of ceremonial knowledge that indigenous people have. And, you know, that was, there was like, well, where are the aliens in that? Right? I'm like, I don't know, whatever. What's it, what is an alien? Like maybe a spirit is an alien, right? I don't know. What do you mean alien? Uh -huh. Anything could be an alien. But I, you know, and they've been calling me ever since. What, this is 2021. Well, I'm now you're going back, huh? They called you. They're going what? back. He's going back now. Now, yeah, maybe I should I go back? Let's do a, let's do a, should people. Oh, you're smart one, man. Ooh, you're welcome. Man, I don't know. Keep getting cut off on this. Now we're talking about aliens. Jeez. What's All going right. on, Brian? I know. Well, we we really messed up because we made fun of rails of now. <laughs> we made fun of ancient aliens. That's this around here. Damn. Yeah. If you, okay. What <laughs> were you gonna say? Were you gonna ask the people if you should if you should go back or not? Yeah. I was gonna right. be like, what do the people think? Should I go back on ancient aliens after I've been ignoring their calls for like what's like 
six years, seven yeah. years. They're still calling me. They <laughs> called today. I got a call. <laughs> They're like, we miss you. <laughs> well, John, again, use we'll the, use the old footage, John. Use the old footage. Use all that. I'm like, right have some more why, left. Why would you think that I, after I after I ignored your calls for seven Damn. years, that like suddenly I'm going to go on now? They're persistent. Yeah. If you do, you better charge them triple, four times, um, make some crazy demands. Yeah. And Tell them some else? skinwalker stories. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> oh, they love that. That's Damn. what they're looking for, right? They're just looking for the kind of, uh, you know, spooky story stuff. And then I told them, I'm like, you know, they're like, well, what about aliens? I'm like, yeah, of course. Like, I mean, a lot of indigenous people, you know, like, well, people come from the stars all the time in stories. So that's aliens. Are we done? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, what's the question, right? It's over. Right? Yeah. yeah, there are aliens. Sure. We've got like, you know, everybody's got some alien stories. Yeah. You know, they come from the stars. They did this. They went back. Some people went back with them. You know, then they came back later after they had... You know, brought a boy came down after they, you know, whatever. What's the? Yeah, he should go back. <laughs> I thought that after I was like that, they wouldn't want me anymore. They're like, yeah, you know, what's the big deal? Like aliens, yeah. So let's talk about something else. What's Mario talking about in the chat over here? Damn, dude. Mario said, yeah, skinwalkers. Let me run out there and buck skin. There you go. That's ancient wow. aliens. That belongs on there. Get this wow. guy a gig. Wow. <laughs> I'll give I'll you his phone him, number. I'll yeah, send, send him, him your way. One. Yeah. Send him the North Fork area. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I heard there's a lot of aliens up there who keep starting fires. Hey? Jeez. <laughs> oh, man. So you're um, famous now, huh? What's that? You're a little famous. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, it's true. I uh, I went somewhere. Um, I went somewhere for a job talk. I don't think he's on here anymore. Um, he was on here before. He even asked me the question. Um, uh, you know, because because I was I was a job talk. I was like, you know, la, la, la. he's like, oh, so what's this thing about ancient aliens? I'm like, oh, oh wow, <laughs> this is embarrassing. <laughs> Oh, man, what are you supposed to know? I have to, like, change my name, you know? Call myself Billy Bob. <laughs> Billy Bob Bald Eagle. Yeah, there you go. Billy Bob Bald Eagle. <laughs> Don't forget your little the Indian alien called? expert. Little leather jacket. Yeah. I have a big uh, turquoise bow tie. It's like the biggest. Bolo, uh, bolo tie. Yeah, just a big old giant one. Like my... My uncle makes those. Uh, he makes those that are like you can't even wear them. It's like literally a rock, you know. It's just like you have to like lift weights with your neck to be able to even wear that thing. It's like ten pounds of rock. <laughs> That's the real. You know, you're real bad when you can wear one of those around. <laughs> Where's my little? Oh, that you haven't, so guys good. haven't seen my little puppy, have you? I heard it. I think we heard it. I haven't seen it last time, right? I heard it scratching itself or something. Oh, this little munchkin. <laughs> Name I mean, of Tinkerbell? Yeah, basically. <laughs> it's the smallest thing ever in the world. <laughs> little little man Che is what I call him. Oh, <laughs> well, boy. Hi. I mean, he was rescued on the street. This little guy was living on the streets in Oklahoma City for I months. More poor. I mean, he's big, smaller than a squirrel. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how he was living. Aww. Now he's like, now he's attached to me. He like, won't he? Literally, like, won't let me out of his sight. <laughs> Aww. I rescued him. Now he's like my little guy. That's my cute. Little guy. Well, you're on. You're on TV now. You're famous. <laughs> Want to go on each aliens? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have him get on there. Be like, make up this, some story. He's really an alien. He's gonna tell you about. Shape <laughs> He's gonna tell you about his people. Okay, go. <laughs> Chihuahua land. Um, hey, go all right. tell him about your people. Okay, so going back on subject. Yeah, um, yeah off the rails with the aliens geez. and everything. I mean, it was fun, but because um, we're almost gonna be ending it. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty crazy everything that's been coming up with it, and it's and it's pretty good that it's getting out there. People are learning about it, understanding. Those that don't know that there's more awareness coming out from it. Um, I hope that some of the families heal from this. But um, what can people? What do you think people should take from this? Like those that are learning from it, or that are seeing it. Yeah, I mean, I think media. that the the you know just general just general people right you know the yeah the the settler people let's say mm -hmm. um in the united states and canada and elsewhere you know i think that you know these things can uh, um can hopefully get people to to listen better in the first place right you know to stop ignoring the things that native people mm -hmm. say about their experience and the things that have happened to them and how they feel about them Mm -hmm. And, you know, not wait hundreds and hundreds of years for the invention of ground penetrating radar, you know, to start listening and doing something about the things that you hear about. You know, that's that's what I would say, um, you know, and to get involved with the, the kinds of projects that are, you know, support the projects that are that are trying to bring the truth and kind of healing work. To, you know, to the United States, like NARF and the um, boarding school um, healing project. And, you know, the, the same for, for, for Native people, you know, like there's, the, you know, the, the things that are happening in Native communities where people are trying to address these things and get involved. And even if you're like, even if you don't think, oh, this doesn't affect me, you know, like I didn't really experience this i don't need to worry about it you know i would say that you know it impacts you as much as anyone else even if you don't know it right and to get involved in the in, in the healing work in your own community as well you know i think that those things are the place to to start for for everybody you know yeah it's gonna be a lot because you know even coping with death that's a that's a big major thing and now coping with the death death right that's been there yeah. for a while and yeah coming back to life coming yeah coming back full circle mm -hmm. and yeah. having to talk about it oh yeah mm -hmm. so and so family member you know they were captured or documents coming back home yeah so that's all relevant if they even kept documents right or even have the documents that's a whole different thing yeah because there's that even that people are some of the work people are doing just recovering the documents mm -hmm. right oh. you know because you do find that even with just the actual graves, even just finding the documentation, right? Because you know, sometimes it's it's hidden away, you know, buried away, and sort of, you know, now now burned, burned, huh? Now burned. All yeah. oh, the church is burning now. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. It's so people. Too. Yeah. You know, people are like, oh, you know, you know, you can't. That doesn't help, you know, burn, you're burning the churches, you know, but, you, but I saw someone post about, you know, like people should be, people should be, uh, you know, thankful that <laughs> that's the, that's the, the only thing people are doing, you know, think about, the, <laughs> you know, think about what we're dealing with here, you know, mm -hmm. people are like, oh, you know, you're taking it too far. What? <laughs> you know, I mean, think about what it is that people are responding to you know 715 you know little babies buried in the ground that you know Lies. just were killed and you know disappeared and people are supposed to just like oh it's no big deal come on that was that was you know the past you know yeah they're comparing lives to a building yeah it's not a good comparison so maybe just like people take it more seriously, like the people that are kind of just trying to, you know, like, oh, you know, why do you, why do you, why can't you get over it? Right. People always say, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. the things that happened in the past, just get over it. I think instead you'd be like, well, what can we do to kind of move forward and mm -hmm. heal from it? Not just yeah. get over it. You take it more seriously and then maybe we can get over it. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You're just saying get over it, then that means nobody can get over it. Yeah. 
Right? Yeah, and all those apologies not, too, man. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry for killing this person. I'm like, oh, yeah. Never. How does that help? Apologies, right? man. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 Your apologies show in the court system. Your apologies show, you know. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. True, true. Man, that's crazy. Well, Brian, thank you for coming on here and shedding some more light on that or sharing or well, educating us. Mm -hmm. um, which is no big deal, but don't get my way started on the Holocaust. So. <laughs> Somebody said it's no big deal, but don't get them started on the Holocaust. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's... Yeah, I'm a Peter um, again thank you for coming on here again with us <laughs> yeah. she she got into my makeup oh you look good <laughs> <laughs> I put on makeup too <laughs> how does my makeup look it's good yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you all for having me on here again. I really appreciate it. It was good yeah. to see you all. And, you know, yeah. I mean, it's hard talking about this stuff, but yeah. I think yeah, it's important, it, too, man. to have fun on Ancient Aliens. Yeah, I'll let <laughs> you all know if I decide to go on there. What? Okay, wait, so we have to let this know um, or say it again. If you guys think he should go back on that show, comment in the comments like go back or if he does what should he do if not then you know he gotta go he gotta go full-on yeah. native crazy which is good for tv yeah <laughs> <laughs> then the big stereotype the big stereotype <laughs> <laughs> all right so you guys let let us and him know in the yeah. comments but um yeah thank you again i appreciate it no, uh no mario said take me too yeah, all right well, i will well, <laughs> I'll I'll hook I'll hook everyone up for I'll just like you'll have a big old party you'll be like be a hundred and <laughs> no, no, we'll have Take a care. big powwow oh yeah yeah <laughs> oh, tell me you're gonna have a ceremony or something yeah 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 we'll oh, just oh. like tell we'll just tell jokes to them be dressed up as scarecrows up there. yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right Ron all right, all right. good to see Love you guys here yeah we'll see y'all later. Bye. 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 Take care. Right. Yeah. So here we go. Logging off with three different parts. Make sure you're all put no, them together. No. Jeez, the feds don't like it, huh? I'm starting dropping truth. Anyway, later, y'all. Good seeing you guys. Bye. <laughs>